Okay, hi, this is Dr. Ilan Cohen, and today we have uh, Dr. Ming Wang uh, from Nashville, uh, and we're going to talk about cataract surgery, about the advantages and disadvantages of laser versus regular cataract surgery, and also we're going to talk about the type of lens choices and uh, which choices are the best. Dr. Wang is a graduate of Harvard Medical School and a very well-known name in the world of eye surgery. He authored a number of books, a medical textbook in the field of ophthalmology, and some of them became all-time bestsellers. His most recent book, uh, From Darkness to Sight, uh, has turned into a major Hollywood production uh, which we released uh, in theaters uh, in, across the nation on Friday, May 24th, the Memorial Day weekend. Uh, Dr. Wang is also one of the most experienced eye surgeons in the nation and certainly a respected authority on the field of cataract surgery. So Dr. Wang, uh, welcome and uh, we, it is great to have you here. And uh, I am truly looking forward to watching your movie that is coming in this May. And if you don't mind, I'm going to dive directly into the questions. And let's start by telling us a little bit about uh, cataract surgery, more specifically about laser cataract surgery. And what do you think are the advantages? Thank you, Dr. Cohen. Uh, first of all, I appreciate the opportunity to be on your show. And second, you mentioned the textbooks that I published over the years. Actually, one of them, you uh, made significant contribution about cornea topography and appreciate your contribution. Thank you. And, uh, right, thank you. Regarding your question about the advantage of laser, it's remarkable that Nobel Prize winners of uh, this, this year in physics and four years ago were both, the, the Nobel Prize in physics were both rewarded to scientists who invented a type of laser, which is ultra short, ultra fast. Um, femtosecond laser, which is 10 to minus 15 seconds. For most of us, that means extremely, extremely precise. It's, it's for a uh, reason why Nobel Prize went, uh, award to the scientists who invented this ultra-fast short laser. It's because it offered the unprecedented um, precision, accuracy um, towards anything we do with these lasers. So for eye surgery and for cataract surgery in specific, uh, specifically, this type of laser, femtosecond laser, offers the unprecedented um, accuracy and precision. And accuracy and precision is what's most important for our patients. They want to have surgery which is precise, they want a surgery which is safe, accurate, and they want a surgery which gives them the best quality of vision. As opposed to humankind, you know, no matter how good we think our hands are, we are no match of a femtosecond laser um, these ultra fast, ultra precise laser, ultra short. So our medicines move in entirely new era. For cataract surgery, laser offers a unprecedented accuracy and uh, precision by uh, being able to do some of the steps that we do, you and I do, both for cataract surgery instead of by human hand using the laser. For example, if somebody gives you and me a piece of white paper to draw a circle freehand with a pencil, you know, we can do, do a decent job. The circle would be okay, but not completely round. But for camera surgery, there's one step. We need to draw a circle on the capsule, allow the old camera lens to come out, a new lens to implant in. And the circle, how long, how precise, what's the exact size of it, and the location uh, of the circle, is very important for the position the lens subsequently implanted in. Except for that analogy. Exactly. So for that, we're using laser, which is consistent every single time making a perfect circle, a perfect diameter you want, in a perfect location. In these three um, accuracies, it, the human hands is no match. Thank you. Now, uh, tell me, uh, Dr. Wang, what percentage of your cases you do with the laser at this point? Um, nearly 100%. Um, it's interesting in the United States today, despite the availability of laser for cataract surgery, still only about 10% or so, maybe a little bit less uh, cataract surgeries uh, today are performed with laser. And that's really because of lack of educational 
a material and tools such as what you're doing in educating your patients about the advantage for their vision for these patients. So um, I think we all need to um, be like you and me that use high technology um, a rapid adaptation so that our patients wouldn't have to wait to get the best outcome. So uh, Dr. Wang, there are some surgeons that still argue uh, that in their opinion, uh, the old fashioned bladed cataract surgery is superior to the laser. What would you say in that regard? Um, I would say two things. One, first of all, uh, many of my patients ask, you know, I've gone to a so-and-so doctor and he will not use laser. Um, why? Uh, the first thing is I want to say, human being, we are creatures of habits, right? If we're used to something, we like to stick with it. Most of the doctors currently operating were trained with blade. So they're used to, then they got reasonably good result to it, and they just want to stay with it. So uh, people in the human nature is to resist change. And uh, but for you and me, we are at the forefront of medicine, we recognize medicine can be only be improved through our open-mindedness and progressive mindset, adapting the latest technology to give our patients so the best result. So in our hands, as a group of leading surgeons, we use laser majority of the time. So that's the first answer is because of the creature of habits, most of surgeons are reluctant to change. And second question is, when you um, have laser cara surgery, is the result truly better? Yes, absolutely. Because as I said, femtosecond laser offer the unprecedented precision and accuracy. And when you use a laser, you're much more certain about the um, lens extraction step in terms of uh, the precision and also reduce the energy they used, they reduce the trauma, so it's a safer, but also improve the precision of the implanted lens where they are, which ultimately determines the quality of vision our patients experience. So there's no question the laser represents a step up in uh, technology and clinical outcome, the vision for our patients. And I think all doctors need to overcome our uh, moment inertia, learn the best technology to give our patients the best. So Dr. Wang, do you believe that maybe the hesitancy of some of these surgeons to use the laser is related to the learning curve, that it requires some new learning and adapting some new skills in order to manage the laser. Exactly, I totally agree. And that's why um, I've been pu publishing these textbooks the, in ophthalmology eye surgery to help uh, surgeons um, kind of improve their um, weak area, so to speak, the technology aspect, because most of us go to medical school, we get trained, get an MD, which is, we're strong in medicine we um, need uh, uh, more training in the technology aspect because medicine today is not just medicine, it's medicine plus technology. So it's an educational issue. Just like your video, you're educating your patients about why laser carrier surgery versus non-laser give them a better outcome, safer and more precise. But also the surgeons need also some uh, same training so that they can learn the latest technology and provide their patients with the best result. Thank you, Dr. Wang. Let's move to the next subject, the subject of lens implant. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience with lens implants and how they have improved patient lives in the recent years? Yes, that's a very good question. So first, we in a cataract surgery, as um, all of us know, we take the old cataract, cataract is the opacified old lens out, and then we don't need to uh, leave the, the little bag where the lens used to sit empty. We put a new artificial lens in there. So there's always a lens implantation second half in a, a typical cara surgery. So the question is what lens do we put in? Um, that depends on uh, three main factors. And the patient always say, oh, did this lens work? Or did this lens work for Johnny? And how come it did not work as well for Nancy? Um, I always tell patients that when you ask if a lens works, that question has to be accompanied by three critically important questions. Number one, what type of lens in terms of its intrinsic characteristics um, that, that, that we, we need to understand? And second, um, which surgeon performing? 
um, but there, there's sometimes patients say it's the same type of lens. Um, what's the big difference between um, Dr. Cohen and another, another doctor? Uh, same principle of the surgery, same type of lens. My answer is that, well, playing golf is the same principle. So let me ask you, what's the big deal difference between uh, playing golf between you and Tiger Woods? Like everything we do as human. Uh, I wouldn't do very well against Tiger Woods. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, so everything we do as human being depends on our each of uh, uh, the human beings uh, experience, knowledge, skill. There are just as much difference among um, doctors performing the same type of surgery using the same type of lens as there are differences among golfers playing the same game of golf. So you want to find the type of woods in eye surgery in order to get best result. So what technology to use? And second, which surgeon? And third is which patient? Because not every patient fits um, the same the technology. So based on these three conditions, what technology, which surgeon, and which patient, then we can adequately answer that if the lens implanted actually produced the best results. So these new lenses, offers an unprecedented capability to expand the range of vision that we see as uh, patients after carat surgery. Just like laser uh, for carat surgery offer the unprecedented level of precision and accuracy and safety, the lens offers the unprecedented range of vision for our patients. Range meaning how far you can see, how close you can see, and do you see the intermediate all human beings have three ranges, you know, far, near, intermediate. So in the old lenses, it's very restrictive. It only offer either distance or near, and actually most is for distance, but new lenses expanded into distance and near, and some even include the mean intermediate range. And then the patient said, why not that? Why not always use the latest, widest range lens? Well, as I just said, it depends on three things, the technology, the surgeon, and also the patients, in particularly the third. The patients, sometimes their body may not adapt to these um, some of the new lenses. So it's not, not about um, just picking whatever the latest, the fanciest. It's about picking what's the most appropriate for each individual patient. Fantastic. That's a great uh, analysis, uh, Dr. Wang. I wanted to know what lenses in particular you had great success with. Yes. Um, there is a host of different lenses from different companies that have produced superb results in our hands and our ability to enable patients to be able to free of dependence on glasses is very high. The most uh, frequent type of lens that I use in my hand is the toric lens. Because toric lens correct the astigmatism. Sometimes patients say, what is astigmatism? I always say, astigmatism is basically your eyeball shaped like American football rather than basketball. So you see things a little bit distorted, elongated. And our technology is basically change your uh, football eye into the basketball. So that's astigmatism and correction of astigmatism. Because astigmatism is so prevalent, a majority of patients have some degree of astigmatism or footballness of their eyes. Um, so we find that toric lenses use the most, uh, uh, mo the, our most popular lens. And toric lens has different uh, subcategories, monofocal toric and multifocal toric, different things, but we focus on correction, the astigmatism, and that seems to, um, uh, to help most among the patients. So that's our go-to lens most of the time. And secondarily, there are other lenses which gives a little bit um, different range positions, certain are distant near, sometimes uh, they are intermediate included, but I always tell patients that um, there's no um, perfect lens, meaning in life we gain something, there's always a trade-off. And when you use certain multi-range lenses, distance, near, intermediate, you do lose sometimes a little bit clarity in each of the three because it's split photon into three groups. So for example, if it's someone who the, the CPA does lots of near work, I will pick a lens a little bit focused on near, but for him, the distance vision is not as important as someone who drives a trucks. So there's a customization of the lens to each patient's lifestyle and their need. Thank you, Dr. Wang. Now, there are patients that are doing a research to go to their doctors and ask for a specific type of lens. 
what would be your suggestions to, the, to those patients that are trying to find out what is the best lens for their specific needs? That's a great question. And that's one of the most important questions for our patients these days. Because with the Google, with all the information available online, patient will do some search, understand certain aspect of the science, and they go to doctor ask for that particular technology. My recommendation to all my patients is that you can do research. Yes, it's always a good idea to educate yourself about what are the lenses. Uh, there is a, a two ways to impair surgery, laser versus no laser, etc. But however, when you go to the doctor, the first and most important aspect for you to think about is the doctor. Because there, as I said, technology, the surgeon and the patients. And the surgeon is extremely important. There are just as much difference among doctors performing the same type of surgery in terms of outcome as there are differences among golfers playing the same game of golf. So first you want to make sure you're going, going to a Tiger Wood in eye surgery. Okay, that's the first thing. And then once you decided that through your research about the doctor, not research about the technology, about the doctor, and through recommendations of people you trust and through different objective evaluation. For example, the best way is always ask as many people in your area as you can. Who have they gone to? What is their experience? Okay, things like that. So once you identify a doctor you can trust that is the best choice doctor, then you go to doctor, you can ask about these technology questions, no, no problem, but remember, you will never you will never know more than the doctor because the surgeon uses this lens and doing the, the eye surgery for a living every day. So they are more, much more likely to know more. So the question, you can pose these questions, but at the end of the day, you're going to ask yourself a question. Do I trust Dr. Cohen? Do I trust Dr. Wang? Okay, that is the most important question because you're never going to Google enough information to know as much as the doctor. For example, if you're dent, uh, if you're CPA, great uh, point. you know, you, you are going to know more about CPA than your eye surgeon for sure. And the, the, there's no way your eye surgeon will ever know more about your CPA accounting than you. So trusting that, that establishing trust in the doctor through object investigation first, through patient referrals. And then you can still post a question about technology, but at the end of the day, Remember, you're going to a doctor for that doctor. You're not going to a doctor for that technology. So trust the final recommendation of the doctor who, after listening to you, after taking into consideration your question about the technology, then make a decision based not just technology, but also based on his or her skill experience. And most importantly, based on your eye measurements. What is the right for you? Thank you, Dr. Wang. That was a very, uh, very good uh, explanation. I want to shift gears a little bit and I want to focus a little bit on your upcoming movie because I'm personally very excited to see it. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the movie itself, uh, what it's based on and about maybe some of the challenges that you encountered along the way in making this movie? Thank you. Yes. Um, I came from China, um, survived the Cultural Revolution in the 1960s and 70s. I came to America in 1982 at age 21. Uh, I was a very poor student. I only had $50, uh, a Chinese English dictionary. Knowing no one in this country could hardly speak English. Um, even though I was poor, but I was happy because I was free. Um, then I had the good opportunity to attend some of the wonderful schools in this country. I got a PhD in laser physics from University of Maryland, finished postdoc at MIT. And then I decided to get my second doctorate degree at this time in medicine, an MD from Harvard and MIT. So I'm very blessed to have the freedom, the opportunity to pursue my American dream as an immigrant. And um, uh, so uh, I've been working in Nashville, Tennessee for the past 27 years. I have One Vision Institute, focus on doing eye surgeries, laser surgery, cara surgery. And also we have a foundation to help blind orphaned children from around the world to help them restore their eyesight and perform these surgeries free of charge. 
So 10 years ago, I wrote a book. I'm holding a copy called From Darkness to Sight about the remarkable stories, some of these blind orphan children, how they uh, came from around the world, brought here by our foundation, their journey from darkness to sight. But at the same time, how these patients have also in inspired me. Um, the, the, this patient with their courage and determination has also have also inspired me, their eye doctor, to come from my own darkness um, to light uh, emotionally. Because every immigrant, we have a balance to achieve. How can we remember our roots, our tradition, but at the same time, um, be at peace with it and move on, embrace uh, the um, present. You know, our present is made possible by the past, but our future is created by the present. So every immigrant um, has that uh, major question to answer. So that's the book. Then uh, Hollywood Studio made the, the, the book into a movie called Sight, um, starring Greg Kinnear, uh, who uh, was Oscar nominated actor. And the message of the movie Sight, it's about freedom. And it's about appreciating what we all have as fellow Americans, um, the common ground. You know, our country is so polarized today. We are so unprecedentedly unable to work across political aisles, racial divides, and ethnic divisions to solve our society's main problems. You know, so many problems we need to solve. This movie is by someone who used to not have freedom to remind all of us as Americans that we are so blessed to live in the country, have the freedom. We need to love America by being more willing to overcome our polarization and to find the common ground. So that's the message of film Sight. Um, it will be released by Andrew Studios, which released The Sound of Freedom last year, another film about freedom. Um, so Sight will be released in theaters across North America on May 24th, Friday, Memorial Day weekend. Actually, it's Asian Heritage Month. So actually, tickets on, is, is already on sale uh, at the site called um, Angel dot com slash site angel dot com slash site we will put a link uh, in the video uh, for, for the purchase yes yes and there's oh, a yeah. giving going on right now it's like you can a uh, 15 dollar ticket you can spend just five dollar by the 15 dollar ticket 67 percent off probably only last few days right now so i encourage uh, everybody to go to see a film support uh, uh, immigrant, support minority, support diverse culture, support America by uh, bringing a story uh, that someone who used to not have freedom remind us we should appreciate what we have in America so much by being more willing to work together. Thank you so much, Dr. Wang. That was a fantastic uh, interview. And I think we touched upon very important points. And I think you brought many of these points into sharp focus. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cohen. Best wishes 